And now I have the privilege and the honor to introduce today's speaker. Sheila Gujarati is a biotechnology entrepreneur and executive, a healthcare investor and a drug developer with more than 25 years of experience in the biotech and pharmaceutical industries. She has founded, built, and run numerous biotech companies and led the development and approval of multiple life-changing pharmaceutical drugs for, patient, for patients with immunology and oncology diseases. Sheila, Sheila is the co-founder and former CEO of Gossamer Bio. Prior to Gossamer, she served as the chief medical officer at Receptos, which was acquired by Celgene. Before that, she was vice president of the Global Clinical Development Group in Immunology at Bristol-Myers Squibb and held multiple roles in immunology and oncology at Genentech. In addition to founding and investing in her own companies in the biotech industry, Sheila currently serves as a chairwoman, a board director, strategic advisor, and consultant to multiple startup companies and investment healthcare funds, including Ventix Biosciences, Adarex Pharmaceuticals, Impact Bio, and Janix Therapeutics. Sheila is also one of our own, having completed the Accelerated Honors Program in Medical Education at Northwestern, graduating with her MD and her Bachelor's of Science in Biomedical Engineering with the highest distinction. She completed her internal medicine internship and residency at Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School, and additional fellowship training in allergy and immunology at the University of California, San Francisco, and Stanford University. Please join me in welcoming Sheila Gujarati. Congratulations, McCormick Class of 2024. Woohoo! What a remarkable class you are. You've overcome so much to make it to this moment, and I am absolutely thrilled to celebrate with you, your loving family and friends, and your distinguished faculty. Thank you, Dean Xu, for this wonderful honor and the opportunity to participate in such a memorable milestone for your graduates today. The future of Northwestern engineering is indeed bright under your brilliant leadership. Graduates. <laughs> graduates, over 30 years ago, I was sitting in your seat waiting for my diploma. Granted, so much has changed since then. I am amazed by your shiny new buildings and your cutting edge curriculum. But we had a bar at Norris. <laughs> Not to mention a football stadium. <laughs> when I was a sophomore, and I'm not kidding, the team lost every single game. Not that I would know. I basically lived in tech. In fact, my car got towed during finals week because I wouldn't leave my books long enough to move it. As engineers, I suspect some of you can relate. But I want you to know this. All that studying is about to pay off. Because in a few short moments, you'll go from writing codes for class to writing the codes for your life, with a world-class education to help you along the way. It will be a different journey than the one you've been on so far. The world is more volatile, uncertain, and complex than ever. With the acceleration of disruptive technology, innovation, and geopolitical pressures, it's challenging for any of us to imagine what the future might look like let alone predict our personal and professional trajectories. But if the past four years taught you one thing, is that you can probably overcome almost anything. And you are incredibly poised for success as Northwestern engineers. Armed with understanding the latest technology, honed analytical problem-solving skills, and the penchant for applying your knowledge and skills to make a significant impact in the real world. I am very excited about what comes next for you. And no matter what that is, I want to offer a few words of advice I hope will help along the way. First, take the time to get to know yourself and be honest about what you really want out of life. This might be the last thing you want to hear when you've just spent 12 quarters 
working toward this very day. You may even think that you have your career all figured out, which is terrific. But life has its twists and turns, especially in today's rapidly evolving world. Honing your inner voice will best serve you in navigating your important decisions. My career path has not been linear. Rather, it has been surprising and invigorating every step of the way. I've been a physician, worked as a management consultant, rose up the pharmaceutical corporate ladder, built and taken biotech startups public, sat on company boards. Today, I am a biopharma CEO and chairwoman, founding my own companies and working on some of the most novel technology in my industry. But back when I was sitting in that sea of purple regalia, I never dreamed I'd be where I am now, not just up here giving this speech, but any of my career. Growing up in a traditional Indian household, I was told I was going to be a doctor before I started kindergarten. <laughs> I never questioned that notion, not as a little kid, not as a teenager, not even when I arrived at Northwestern as part of the seven-year medical program. Most of you in the class of 24 started college during the COVID pandemic. Not ideal, I know. I too had a suboptimal start. My father had passed away just before my freshman year. While I was savoring my newfound independence and the biomedical engineering curriculum on this beautiful campus, I was also struggling with my new reality and how to face my future. By the time I was in my first year of medical school, everything came crashing down on me like an avalanche. The unprocessed grief, the expectations, the pressure. I couldn't figure out how I'd gotten here or why I was doing any of it at all. So I did something that shocked everyone, most of all myself. I left. I sublet my apartment and I moved to an ashram in India. While my classmates were in their clinical rotations, I was meditating in a jungle. To say my mom was concerned was an understatement. <laughs> she eventually came around a few decades later. <laughs> She's here in the audience. <laughs> yeah, give it to my mom. But at the time, she was calling the ashram every day, demanding they send me home. She had a point. This was a risky, you might even say reckless, detour from my path. However, it turned out to be one of the greatest blessings of my life. I became clear about my purpose and my values, which formed the foundation upon which I would lead the rest of my life. In all my exploration and contemplation, I heard my inner voice for the first time. Eventually, I did come back and finish my medical school, residency, and fellowship. And after all that training, I summoned up the courage to make another difficult and terrifying decision, to leave my safe comfort zone of medicine and embark upon a completely new career, not knowing what that looked like or whether I would be successful. I couldn't have made that decision without the one before it. And this time, I knew that the most important voice for me to listen to was my own. If you haven't yet, start paying close attention to your instincts and energy levels, to what you feel in your core when you first wake up in the morning. Is it excitement? Is it dread? Something in between? Don't ignore the answers. They're pointing you to your purpose and passion, what you were put on this earth to do. You can't become a master and excel in your career, go the extra mile, and overcome the countless professional challenges that will inevitably come your way until you figure that out and simply love what you do. You can't stop at what you want to do, though. You also have to figure out who you want to be. Which leads me to my second piece of advice. Live a life congruent with your values. It can be easier than you think to lose your way. When I was starting out in the business world, people kept telling me that to make it, I had to perfect my poker face, to hide my emotions, share information on a need-to-know basis, 
and keep my guard up. I am not a very good poker player. And I never wanted to be. I yearned to be honest and compassionate without worrying that I'd be manipulated for being true to my values. But here's the thing, if poker doesn't suit you, you don't have to play. I eventually made a pact with myself that no matter what, I would stay authentic to who I was. I wanted to wear my heart on my sleeve, to be transparent with people, to treat them with dignity and respect, regardless of their title or position. Those were the values I embraced in the ashram, the same ones that helped me find my North Star and my compass. And if that made me less successful, so be it. Turns out, it didn't hamper my success at all. It propelled it. Because I feel confident in myself, the choices I make, and the people I choose to work with. You should be able to live an integrated life where you are the same person professionally and personally. The fact is, the wider the gap between the work you and the real you, the harder it is to feel safe and secure. It's exhausting to maintain a facade that is not your truth. Don't compromise yourself and settle for less. When you eliminate that gap, you will not only find it easier to live with yourself, but to achieve so many of your aspirations. Your power and courage come from your authenticity, and that is when you thrive. Which brings me to my final piece of advice. Surround yourself with people who have your back and truly want you to be successful. In other words, build a personal board of directors. That's a very corporate way to put it, but hear me out. Throughout my career, I've been in countless rooms where I was the only woman let alone person of color. Anyone who's experienced this knows that it can be very lonely. Add to that all the times I was told I would never get the job I wanted, that I was too ambitious, and it was doubtful that I would be successful. Thankfully, I believed in myself and persevered to achieve my dreams. They're just words, but it's hard not to internalize them when you don't have someone in your corner telling you otherwise. And it's hard to maintain your values if you don't surround yourself with people who share them. I will never forget the day when a mentor asked me why I wasn't looking for CEO roles, which I never considered for myself. He had confidence in me, and it made all the difference. Here at Northwestern, you've been surrounded by a built-in community of like-minded classmates and encouraging professors. But when you leave campus, that kind of support system is more elusive. It's going to be critical to seek out mentors who give you great advice at the right time, sponsors who open closed doors and bring you opportunities, and role models who inspire and motivate you. These trusted advisors, your personal board of directors, are vital to your success. I know this can be daunting. While we engineers aren't exactly known for our extroversion, it's so worth it to put yourself out there and find your people. I did this a few years ago, and it honestly changed my life. We created a group for women biotech CEOs, and it's quickly gone from a Slack and WhatsApp group to a true sisterhood. We are there to offer advice and lift each other up in times of success and failure. And it's not only helped each of us individually, it's helped us grow the cohort of women in our industry. And I can't tell you what that has meant to me. It doesn't matter whether you're entry level or in the C-suite. Building a company from scratch or picking yourself up from the failures that you will undoubtedly experience along the way. None of us can navigate the world alone. So don't try. Build a brain and heart trust you can turn to to guide you along your journey. Graduates, I know you have a lot of celebrating to get to. So I'll just leave you with this. Life is not a code we build once and run on autopilot, as much as we might wish it were. And it's absolutely OK if you don't end up where you thought you would. If you know who you are and what you want, believe in yourself, and surround yourself with people who will set you up for success, I have no doubt you will find your way and live the life of your dreams.
Regardless of what you decide to do, as Northwestern engineering graduates, you've already proven that you're ready for your future full of endless possibilities. And remember, how you choose to make your mark is entirely up to you. The whole world is open in front of you. Whichever way you go, I'll be rooting for you. Congratulations again, graduates. Have an amazing day, and best of luck in your next chapter.